Hello there. I think one of the most popular questions I get both in comments and DMs is often, how do I start drinking coffee? Or how do I start even enjoying coffee? And usually what people mean is black coffee without any additions to it. Now, coffee has many, many, many different compounds in it that develop in our mouths as tastes in many different ways. However, frequently in coffee, we will be talking about bitterness, sweetness, and acidity. Now, when people start drinking black coffee, usually the two they focus on are the acidity and the bitterness. Those are very, very strong flavors that can take some adjusting or some calibrating to enjoy and get used to. And those are often like the blockers for people jumping from let's say like a latte or coffee with a sweet creamer to just drinking black coffee. Unfortunately, I don't have necessarily a quick and easy solution on how to enjoy black coffee immediately, at least not on your own, but I think I may have found a solution with a tool involved. <laughs> Let me go grab it. You may have seen these floating around the internet. These are berries that in a sense, temporarily adjust your sense of flavor. Let me read you the scientific terms though. I did my best to memorize what these are called and yet the words escape me. So these berries, which the brand is Mberry, it's not sponsored. And I suppose we could call it Mberry, but Mberry seems funner to say. These berries are often known as miracle fruit. They are called Sincepalum dulcificum. <laughs> is the scientific name for them. And essentially what they do is when you eat them, they kind of wrap around your taste buds and your taste receptors and they alter them temporarily. This is like a 30 minute to maybe an hour long process, depending on how you react to them. What they do is they take things that taste sour and or bitter or pungent and they turn them to taste sweet. I have yet to ever have tried these before. I remember these have made their way around the internet and around taste tests for a very long time. So very infamous. But today I want to try them with coffee. We need to get some coffee brewed that we can taste. I also have a fair amount of other items that I think we should taste in order to test the, uh, the effectiveness of these. So I'll be right back. I want to give a huge thank you to Lark for sponsoring today's video. Lark is set on helping you have the best water possible at home at all times. And personally, I like to put the same amount of effort that I put into my coffee into my water. The Lark pitcher uses a two-step filtration and purification process using a long-lasting plant-based filter that removes lead, chlorine, and PFAs, all things that you don't necessarily want in your coffee brewing water. It also uses UVC LED technology that works every six hours to prevent any bacterial contamination once it's stored in the fridge. It's intuitive to use, boasts a sleek design and two colors and also has an app that can help you track your household water consumption and warns you when it's time to change the filter, a feature that is especially helpful for me and I've needed more than once. Lark also has a bottle that uses the same UVC technology, so if you're someone who's more on the go, it's lightweight and packs easily with the rest of your things. Now, if you're ready to get started with Lark, head over to buylark.com MDC or click the top link in the description. And thank you again to Lark for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. I now have a wide variety of various tasting things in front of us. Now, starting off at the back, we have the liquids. So I have hot brewed coffee right here. Very standard cup of joe, your everyday coffee. I also have cold brew over to the side. Additionally, I have this, which is not fully a liquid. <laughs> there is certainly fruit pulp in it, but what this is called lulo. Now, this is one of the names for a fruit that is very commonly grown in Central and South America. And it's actually an, an ingredient of the signature beverage I made at the World Barista Championship. Lulo is a citrus. It is a very, very very, very tart citrus. It's one of the most tart citruses I've ever had in my life, even more so than lemon. So we've got some of the pulp and the juice right here to taste. Additionally, got some, some food items. Now the company that makes these had some recommendations. So they said cheese was a fun experience. So we've got some extra sharp cheddar. We also have some tart blueberries. And additionally, we have some tomatoes, very high acidity. Over here in these two cups, we have what is not actually coffee concentrate and water. We have white distilled vinegar. We have soy sauce. We'll save these for last. Those should be interesting. First First things first, we have to actually take one of these. Now, the miracle fruit that these little pills are derived from is actually native to West Africa, and it is pretty integral in a lot of different cultures. It's used prior to meals frequently, but here we have kind of a, a more modern like pill form. This is made simply using the miracle berry and then cornstarch just to have it hold its shape in some way. Pop one of these bad boys out, and then the instructions, pretending I'm actually reading the instructions, place one berry tablet on your tongue and dissolve completely. So here goes nothing. And I will say we have quite a few hours before dinner, so I think I'm setting myself up for success for being able to actually enjoy a non-sweet dinner tonight. This is in theory supposed to last between 30 minutes. They say at a max, a lot of reports have said about two hours at the absolute max. Very much depends on you and how your body reacts to it though. I'm like nervous. <laughs> Am I supposed to chew it? Let it dissolve. It doesn't taste bad. It doesn't really taste like anything. So far, this experience is perfectly neutral. I think we're gonna start with the liquids. If you can't tell, I'm still gumming around this tablet I've got in my mouth. 
still waiting, certainly reduced in size. It's like half of what it used to be. It's almost gone. I feel like it's been like five minutes now. All right, that is the last of that. We are fully dissolved now. And I think we're gonna just start in the middle with our hot brewed coffee. Now, this is a light roast. This is a Kenyan coffee. This is a pretty acidic coffee in general. It's very, very, very tasty. But again, if someone was to immediately jump to this coffee as their first go at black coffee, it might be a little bit intense to the palate. I'm like nervous. I know what coffee, coffee should taste like, but what will this taste like? I gotta try it again. That goes down so easy. <laughs> There's a weird phenomenon of it still, like it tastes like coffee, but it tastes like I'm drinking coffee through like the lens of a strawberry, kind of. I think that's the best way to describe it. This is a fascinating experience. You get a lot more of like the darker notes of the coffee. Like you get maybe some chocolate that really doesn't exist in it if you drink it on its own. You get a lot of like, kind of like roasty bits that come with coffee, but you don't taste like anything on the palate in terms of like acidity and bitterness. Usually you can feel acidity, you can feel bitterness. It's like that kind of like puckering that you get with like a lemon perhaps. It's a very like tactile experience in your mouth. You don't get that at all. It's just, it is sippable. But shockingly, it doesn't not taste like coffee. That's actually a very, very pleasant surprise. Let's move on to cold brew. This cold brew has a very, very different flavor profile. Cold brew on a whole is usually a lot smoother than like hot, like brewed coffee is. Usually there is kind of lower perceived acidity. Usually it's in like a darker profile of taste. We'll see how this goes. The interesting thing is all of this still smells like what it's supposed to be. The taste is just so different. It tastes like water. <laughs> kind of incredible. You do get this weird kind of like back of the mouth, like berryness that definitely is like what the pill itself, the miracle berry itself tasted like. But beyond that, it's fascinating. It doesn't taste like cold brew. It tastes like water. And I, I don't have a better descriptor than that. You don't even really get the same, like maybe like darkness or roastiness that you get from this one that kind of like in my mind reminds me of coffee. This is dangerously sippable. Okay, well, those are coffee flavors. We now have something that is incredibly tart. This Lulo right here, especially this concentrated like juice and pulp variety, it's like pucker your face, like unbearably bitter, not bitter, sour, tart. It's all the things. Anyways, we're gonna try it now. I'm like nervous. I've had this on its own a couple of times and can be a lot sometimes. Very tasty when like diluted and put in stuff and made into like a full juice, but in this concentrate form, that's like messed up. That's not, <laughs> this is so weird. It tastes like candy. I'm hoping someone in the comment section will have some point of reference for how tart this fruit can be. And especially if you purchase it in the States in like a frozen like concentrate pulp form like this has been. Like, I don't know how to describe how like mouth puckeringly tart this can be. This right here tastes like there was like a gallon of sugar poured into it. If anything, it's like mouth puckering because it's too sweet. This is not like a super pleasant experience. I don't want to have more of this. It is definitely on the too sweet realm, but it's exceptional. That was even more of a transformation than I was expecting, but these are all liquids. Drinking sweet liquids, totally fine. I feel like most liquids I perceive as being sweet. However, we have some food items over here that are not necessarily supposed to be sweet. Let's get over to the hard goods. Starting on the more tame end, we have blueberries. These are tart blueberries, but blueberries themselves have natural sugars in them, so they do have sweetness to them. However, let's see how sweet they're gonna be now. It is like eating candy. Candy with a very strange, gummy, berry-like texture, but candy all the same. I feel like I can only do this for this video. Like in general, on the scale of like preferring sweet things to salty things, I am certainly on the saltier side. Having this much sweet stuff in a row, it's kind of killing me. And like my body and my eyes are excited at the fact that I see cheese in front of me because it should be salty in my brain. Knowing that it might not be brings me a little bit of sorrow, but we have an extra sharp cheddar here. Let's see how this goes. I don't want to like ruin cheddar for myself. I just want it to taste like cheddar so badly. And yet it does not. I've always described myself as being more of a texture person. Like if you gave me something with a really, really good texture and you gave me something with a really, really good taste, probably opt to have the texture thing over the taste. This is kind of a test of that in a very interesting way because you get all the texture of cheese. You do get none of the taste though. It like neutralizes it. Like with, with something this like sharp, having that much sweetness doesn't really make it taste sweet. It like neutralizes the flavor. Like the cheese doesn't taste like anything. This is taken away so much joy for me. <laughs> we now have tomatoes though. Tomatoes are incredibly acidic things. They can be perceived as sweet often. Tomatoes are actually fruits, but they also have a lot of acid in them. And I also love tomatoes and I don't want to not love this tomato, but mm -mm. nope. 
No, 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 mm -mm. that was not good. <laughs> that was so incredibly not good. I love tomatoes. I will like full on like Denethor slurp on a tomato all by itself. I'll eat a tomato like an apple. That is totally fine. And I've always been surprised when people really don't like tomatoes, but if that's how you perceive a tomato, I can understand how you would hate it. Like that flavor, that weird sweetness I just got on top of the like juicy fleshy texture of a tomato was highly unappealing. <laughs> I can sympathize with the, the tomato haters out there a little bit more now. This was a little bit more soul breaking than the coffee was. We now have two other things that will hopefully either clear my palate or destroy it. We have white distilled vinegar here, which if you know, is an incredibly pungent vinegar. Like I can smell this from across the room. Now we also have soy sauce, which in my partner Graham's opinion can and should be drank on its own. I am a little bit less of that opinion. <laughs> it is a little bit of a strong flavor for me by itself, but we have it here and it is among the, well, these two are among the recommended things to try when under the influence of berry. <laughs> I don't know which one I'm more nervous about. Probably the vinegar. I don't make a habit out of drinking white vinegar on its own. I have had soy sauce on its own, so maybe we will start here. The grand finale will have to be the vinegar. Sure smells like soy sauce. It's just so conflicting. Like the flavor is so strong that you get like underlying bits of it. Like on the back of my mouth, the back of my palate, I can taste that it's soy sauce, but the front of my tongue tells me that it's sweet and the texture and it's heavy and it's just not good. <laughs> I'm not having a good time right now. We have some vinegar, just gonna have a little bit. For a second there, I was just urged to kind of end it all and just shoot it, but I'm just gonna have a sip. I can't even. It's so strong on the nose. I'm pretty sensitive to like vinegar smells. This is like, it's everywhere. It still stings like vinegar. The back of the palate is still very vulnerable. I think is the best word to all these flavors, but the front of the mouth tells you that it's tasty and it's not. <laughs> this is such an overwhelmingly overwhelming experience to my mouth right now. This was far more than I could have ever hoped, wished, or bargained for. I gotta go back to the cold brew. I have to have a little bit more of this. See, this is fine. These berries with coffee, totally decent and fine and almost neutral experience. These berries with literally anything else is startling, unexpected, and a little bit disturbing, <laughs> I think is the best way to describe the items that I have chosen to pair with these berries. I'm gonna do some poking around to see what these berries and what meals these berries are traditionally paired with. I think it would be very interesting to try those. However, I think this miscellaneous and random assortment of items to test were perhaps not the best. <laughs> This was a fascinating experience. Now, the ultimate question at the beginning was, is this a decent way to begin tasting coffee and appreciating black coffee without any additions? I would say yes. I think this neutralizes a lot of the compounds and like taste perceptions that you might find a little bit overwhelming at first. A lot of that bitterness and sourness is very much cut out. You're left with just kind of like, I would describe as like pure coffee taste as well as a little bit of sweetness. Very, very sippable. However, for any other purposes, I think proceed with caution would be my, my best word of advice here. It is a fascinating experience. It's also a really good, I think, lesson in how you taste. With all of these, you get a very, very good idea of the journey that your food takes as it travels across your palate and as you experience different places of tasting. So the front of your tongue, the back of your tongue, the middle of your tongue, also how it affects like the rest of your mouth. I think having these berries and experiencing very, very strong flavors, especially like these three, it helps you a lot in understanding how you taste, which is also helpful for coffee. I'm going to go very patiently wait out the last, gosh, 20 to two hours that I have left with these berries in my system. And then I will very excitedly eat some of these things again as they are maybe meant to be consumed. I hope this was perhaps an interesting experiment for you. I hope this gave you some interesting knowledge of how these berries work. And if you perhaps wanna try them, at home. Again, not sponsored by Mberry. They were just the most accessible option for getting them. They seem to work exactly as promised, if not even better than promised. They're a very, very fun taste experiment. I'm gonna take the cold brew. I will continue sipping on this while lamenting the fact that I just had sweet cheese and sweet tomatoes and very sweet vinegar and soy sauce. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere you'll find me. I'm here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram every single day. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.